just like any other governance. There's what we call design time governance. Really, this is the decision making. It's prioritization and investment management, right? Which services are going to be built first? You know, are we're, how are we going to invest? How much money do we have? We want to invest. Essentially, your portfolio management, right? So these are decisions that are made along with the business folks. Um, architectural decisions. So that's the next level of of the decision. What is the implementation? What is the you know, we have the business processing, we have the ESB, what is the, how do you implement this architecturally? What are architectural standards? And that's done by usually by a subcommittee. And this is all organizational level stuff, really. Uh, you know, interface definition, this is architectural. Infrastructure decisions, right? So this is how much hardware, you know, all of this, and service metadata management. So all of these things are decisions that are made with committees and subcommittees and really happen on the organizational level. No software is going to substitute for that. Then you have the runtime governance. This is really governance. Once you have the services and so are running, you know, you want to make sure that this not, it's not a burden. It's a well-managed entity. So things like SLA conformance. We want to make sure that our services conform to certain SLAs as far as performance, uptime, and this is what uh, the runtime governance will do for you. So some software products or, you know, authentication authorization, another form of governance and control and operational readiness. I mean, you want to make sure that your SOA infrastructure and your services are operationalized. You, if something goes down, just like any other piece of software that you have in your enterprise, something goes down, you want to be notified, you, know, want, to, you want to start, restart. Anything that you do with any other application from an operational perspective, you want to be able to do with your SOA infrastructure and your services. Um, so from the runtime governance perspective, you have some products, uh, such as JBoss SO governance, Amberpoint, and SO software that perform uh, really the runtime governance uh, piece. But again, governance is not about a piece of software that you buy. You really have to look at the decision making, your organizational structure, who's on these committees, who's making these decisions. Uh, and then only after that you get into the governance software and the runtime aspects of that. Uh, data management and virtualization. This is not virtualization as uh, you guys are you know, seeing here, like Amazon Cloud and anything else. This is really uh, virtualizing and uh, kind of abstracting away where your data comes from. So data services actually comprise more than 80% of, of all your service. If you think about it, you know, what do you want to servicelize when in your organization, in most organizations? It's data. It's account data. It's customer data. It's transaction data. So mo what we see out there is most companies really create services around their data. Um, and, you know, really that data resides probably in many, many different places, you know, with any large organization that's like probably older than 10 years. And it's very important when you're creating these services to kind of create the single view of that data. Uh, because you're not going to be able, chances are you're not going to be able to kind of centralize that data right off the bat. You're not going to be able to pull all the customer data into one giant warehouse, keep it up to date. So you have to have the means to actually reach out to all this multiple data sources for this data and pull it in and present it as a single entity, for instance, as a customer, even though you might have customer representation residing in Salesforce, in your local CRM database and someplace else. Uh, the reason why we called, it, called this out as a separate kind of discipline within SOA is because these things are usually optimized for real-time data integration. It's not your ESB. Uh, ESB wouldn't do that job. So it's, it's a really another first-class citizen or another distinct component of SOA that needs to be brought in and perhaps earlier. So that layer, data services layer, is actually leveraged by ESB at runtime. Uh, that, you know, the, the layer that creates you the single view of those data entities. Uh, once you kind of abstract it, you know, these data entities, you provide yourself a path to migration towards you know, master data management and consolidation of that data, but not vice versa. I mean, we've seen a lot of master data management efforts fail because Organizations take a big bang approach. I'm going to centralize it first and then present it as a single service. You know, we kind of twisted the problem and flipped it on its head and say, well, let's abstract it first. Let's make it look like it's one entity and then move towards master data management and really data consolidation. Uh, some of the products that play in this space, uh, Red Hat Metamatrix, uh, Composites uh, software through here, and Exaware, uh, Exaware uh, is an open source uh, product. So again, very important part of so perhaps if you're a data intensive company and most of your services have to do with data, you want to address that uh, early on as an infrastructure and so forth. Okay, last, but well, not last, but very important thing. Um, 